Hello everyone. In the last lecture, we discussed about the introduction to plasma optics, uh, which describe how plasma affect the propagation of electromagnetic waves in plasma medium. Today, uh, we, we are going to discuss about the different modes of uh, electromagnetic wave in plasma. So before going into uh, detail of, about that, we need to discuss about the dissipation relation of electromagnetic waves. So uh, the dissipation relations which actually describes how the uh, dissipation affects the propagation of electromagnetic waves in a medium and uh, uh, so it's basically connect the wavelength or wave number with frequency uh, of the corresponding electromagnetic wave in, in that medium. So uh, in plasma medium uh, we consider it is it as a non-magnetic isotropic medium. So we can see that in a plasma, there will be an equal distribution of positive and uh, positive ion and negative charges. So there will be always a charge neutrality. So when uh, in this kind of medium, when there is an excitation of uh, electrons uh, by thermal or some other means, uh, we can have the same number of similar number of uh, positive and negative charges. So there is always a uh, you know it will uh, it will obey the charge neutrality. And uh, if you if there is a motion of electrons from one side to another, so that there will be uh, another electrons will be moving into this region, so that there will be always a charge neutrality inside the medium. So we can consider it as a uh, non-magnetic isotropic medium. So in order to uh, discuss about the uh, in order to cons uh, consider the dissipation relation of electromagnetic waves, uh, we need to consider the uh, for Maxwell secations. So in a uh, non-magnetic isotropic medium, these are the four Maxwell secations where delta uh, delta dot E uh, that is equal to zero because uh, rho is, should be zero, rho by epsilon naught, so that times become zero. So since it is non-magnetic, del dot B is equal to zero, and the third equation is del cos E is equal to uh, minus dou B by dou. D. And the fourth equation is uh, del cross B is equal to mu zero epsilon naught dou E by dou T. We uh, neglect the first term, mu zero J will be equal to zero. So these are the four Maxwell equations. So now we uh, derive the, uh, you know, the dissipation relation. So the equation connecting omega and K, where omega is the frequency and K is the wave, wave vector. So it relates to wave number. The wave ve uh, vector will be related to wave number. Sorry, the wavelength. So now uh, we take care operation to this equation, the third Maxwell equation, that is del cross del cross E, that will be equal to del cross, uh, this del cross E is minus dou B by dou T, right? So this will, this will be equal to, we can take this derivative outside, so this will be equal to minus dou by dou T of del cross B. Now we substitute for del cross B, so that will become minus dou by dou T of mu zero epsilon naught dou E by dou T. Now the LHS of these equations, we can uh, we can expand this uh, equation like this, that is del, do, del of del dot E minus del square E, where this term, the first term del dot E is equal to zero. So this side becomes minus del square E is equal to uh, minus mu zero epsilon naught dou square e by dou t square we can uh, you know we can um, uh, remove this minus sign on both sides then we will get del square e is equal to mu zero epsilon naught dou square e by dou t square so since epsilon e is equal to d the displacement vector so we are considering the si unit here otherwise it is epsilon e plus p d is equal to epsilon e plus p so this becomes mu zero dou square d by dou t square we can convert this one into this form we can express in the uh, in terms of d the displacement vector now in order to convert these equations to cgs uh, we can just replace this mu zero with 1 by c square. So this is the way we can convert this SI uh, system, SI unit system into CGS. So mu zero is replaced by 1 by c square. So this expression is become c square into del square e is equal to dou square d by dou t square. So this is the uh, uh, corresponding dissipation relations, uh, but this is connecting e and d. 
So this is uh, we can uh, represent this form. The c square del square e is equal to x log into dot square e by dot t square. Remember uh, in CGS uh, d is equal to x log into e, not x log not e. Here it is x log not e. So this becomes x log into dot square e by dot t square. But uh, we need to connect. Uh, we need to express the uh, dispersion relation in terms of omega and k. So for that, uh, we we know that this uh, the electric field. The electric field uh, in this expression will be proportional to. It is in this form. It will be proportional to exponential minus i omega t into exponential i k dot r. So this is this term will be proportional to this one. So we can uh, simply substitute this one here. So uh, c square into if you take del square of this term, that becomes uh, um, I, we consider the second term. So this term only have t terms. So this is having r terms. So the, uh, since it is dot square by uh, uh, second derivative, this becomes minus k square. So there are two terms. So minus k square into e. So this becomes minus c square into minus k square into e. The electric field vector is equal to x log into Uh, minus omega square. If you take the dot square by dot t square of this term, this will be minus a uh, my two times i omega. That is minus omega square into e. So this uh, we can simplify into this form. We uh, uh, we you know we remove the minus sign from both sides. This become x log into omega square is equal to c square k square, where x log is a function of both uh, frequency and wave vector. So this is called the Dispersion relation of electromagnetic wave in a medium. Now uh, we need to consider different cases where uh, we can have different modes of operation. So this can uh, this x naught omega and k how can have different combinations. So uh, sometimes it can be real. Some cases it can be you know imaginary. Sometimes uh, it can be complex. So depending on that, there are different uh, conditions. So we need to consider that. In the first case, uh, we consider epsilon, the uh, you know the dielectric functions as real. So that also it will be greater than zero. So this is obey both these conditions. So epsilon is real as well as epsilon is greater than zero. So that times omega will be real. So this case omega is also real. Then k is also will be real. So from this expression, if epsilon is real and uh, it is positive quantity and omega is also real. Then automatically k will be a real quantity. So this corresponds to transverse electromagnetic wave propagate uh, propagations uh, with phase velocity. So with the phase velocity uh, Vp that is equal to omega by k. So phase velocity is omega by k. From this expression, if you uh, rearrange these terms, we'll get uh, this will be equal to c by square root of x log naught. So this wave, uh, these conditions. Where x log is a real quantity and it is a positive value, and omega is also real, then k will be real. In that case, uh, there will be a transverse electromagnetic wave uh, with a phase velocity c by square root of x log naught. In the second case, where x log is real but it is less than zero, it is a negative quantity, and omega is also real. So we consider the omega is real. So in this case, x log is a negative quantity but real. Omega is real. That time, k square, the k value will be imaginary. So the k value, the di, uh, the wave vector uh, will be imaginary quantity. So that corresponds to a wave which is damped with a characteristic length of one pi modulus of k. So it will be a damped wave with a uh, characteristic length of uh, one pi modulus k. In third case. Where epsilon is uh, the uh, you know the dielectric function is a complex quantity for uh, for real omega we consider the omega is real but epsilon is a complex quantity so that means uh, the k will be complex if epsilon is complex and omega is real then k will be also a complex quantity so which corresponds to a wave which damped in a space so this will be damped damped in a space so that means. It cannot propagate, so this condition cannot propagate. Now the fourth condition, when x log is equal to infinite, so in this case, the if, if, if x log is equal to infinite, so that corresponds to if uh, if x log is equal to infinite, and if you want to obey these equations, so there is a finite response 
even in the uh, uh, you know even when there is no uh, input so that corresponds to free oscillation so there is a finite response even uh, even without any input so that corresponds to a free oscillation conditions and finally if x load is equal to zero in this case so that will be corresponds to a longitudinal polarized wave so a longitude uh, longitudinal polarized wave will be propagating in that medium so this uh, these uh, five conditions corresponds to uh, different cases of uh, this uh, dispersion relations so that will give different type of wave propagations so we will uh, in, uh, we will consider about these two cases where uh, there is a transverse and uh, longitudinal uh, polarized wave propagation in medium in plasma medium so we will consider in first case uh, in the next section we will consider about the the first sections where uh, there is a transverse electromagnetic wave propagate so that corresponds to the transverse electromagnetic wave uh, modes in plasma medium so we will discuss about that later